welcome to the Politics and PSAs virtual or vertical brand builder here at Outfront. I'm Lindsay Kramer. I'm our director of strategic initiatives. And I have spent the last two, two and a half years working on a number of government and political focus initiatives, first really starting with the census that happens every 10 years and building up how out of home could be a big player for local communities. Um, in 20, for the 2020 census. And then I partnered up with Lonnie Farrow, who will introduce herself in a second to really start to leverage what out of home can be in the political world. Hi everyone, Lonnie Farrow, Vice President of Government Affairs for the South Region here at Outfront. I've been with the company for about two years and have had the privilege to work with Lindsay on building our political division. Drew. Oh, you're on. My name is Drew Bowen, and I'm the National Associate Creative Director, and I've been here since 2014. There, I'm Brian Lanza, a partner at Mercury Public Affairs, and I've got about 20 years of campaign experience you know, at the state, local, and federal level. It's an, it's an excited to be here. All right, so as we dive into today's presentation, help you guys understand what out of home can mean in the political and PSA and government messaging world, we'll first talk about the benefits and advantage, advantages, challenge some misperceptions that we had heard as we started our strategic approach and have had conversations over the last couple of years. Brian will highlight 2020 by the numbers, give us some insights and trends based on his experience in the category. We'll talk about how out of home drives digital action. We know how important in this category in general, but across the media landscape, digital media is, and most importantly, how people are taking actions on their digital devices. So what out of home can do to help all those media dollars work harder. And then what that means, not only in the digital space, but also how we can amplify that targeting on mobile. And finally, Drew will bring us home talking about the power of creative because we know that no campaign is as effective as the creative is good. So we need the creative. I don't think I said that right, but the point is strong creative drives a lot more campaign effectiveness. And we think it's really important to leveraging the impact of your messaging. Um, we'll kick it off with a video. Hope you all enjoyed that. Found out while we were doing that that we've been in presenter mode. I'm gonna try and switch it and hopefully everyone sees the main screen now moving forward. Um, so when we start to look at the out of home industry and the benefits and advantages of out of home in politics and government and PSAs, and this this category can probably have so many commas after it if we really wanted to keep adding some terms. When Lonnie and I first started having conversations with political groups and with candidates and with consultants, one of the things we were met with was the misperception, misperception of the out-of-home industry as an old-school print-it-and-stick-it format, that out-of-home ads were basically just yard signs and the, their best effectiveness would only come from name recognition because very often candidates and groups felt like they would run 
buy a space, have it for four weeks. And if they tried to do anything other than name recognition, there was always a chance by the time they printed the ad, stuck it up, it was out of the news cycle and, and not right for the audiences. But the ad home industry has come a huge way in the last 10 years with the introduction of digital out of home. And it's brought a lot of innovation along with it that helps out of home now reach audiences the way other media reaches them in a more dynamic and interactive way. So first and foremost, there's a lot we can do around activation and frequency. We can get campaigns live in hours versus days. On digital out of home, you can be reactive to things that are happening in the world, whether it's during an election cycle or it's a local mayor wanting to show support for their community um, because something happened and, or, or a good thing or a bad thing and they want to say congrats to a local high school. They don't want to have that ad up two weeks later after a big football game, but they might want to say something right away in over that weekend and really allow them to reach the community in a contextually relevant and a timely way. And that's where we can get campaigns up quickly um, and more frequently. And most importantly, if you're already running with us, there's also an opportunity to be a lot more flexible. So you can change out your creative as needed or in your campaign planning, you can do things around day parting. You can really make sure that your creative changes based on people's morning commutes and their afternoon commutes. You can add that extra layer of contextual relevance. You can do weather triggers. There's a lot you can do around the creative elements and the activation and frequency to make sure that you're reaching audiences when it matters, how it matters, and with the right content so that you're resonating with them. So out of home is not just a static yard sign anymore. It can do a lot more and be leveraged the same way as you're leaning into other media formats. And then we start to think about our reaching audiences. At Outfront, what is a huge differentiator for us is that we have over 500,000 assets across uh, the country with, with an additional 3 million mapped locations when you layer on our mobile offering. What that does is allows us to have a huge footprint in the country and in reaching the audiences you want to connect with. That's both in urban centers and then out into the tentacle areas of suburbs and even at times more rural locations. But the other thing that is incredibly important about out of home and that it does differently than any other media is you're able to reach mass audiences at scale. So you're reaching those audiences that you want in a very targeted and strategic way with accuracy efforts, which we'll talk about in a second, but you also can connect with those people on the tertiary um, who you're trying to target, who are slightly on the fence of the level of impact or indexing that you're trying to target. And when it comes to political messaging, that can be undecided voters. That can be people who've historically voted one way, but might be on the fence this time around and enough repetition with messaging could convert them. So you don't, with out of home, you don't lose the opportunity to connect with people who might be on the fence and allow you to start changing how you're targeting them. The next piece is the industry has evolved in such a way that we're able to have a lot more accuracy and reach against who we're trying to connect with. We have a proprietary system that gives us near real-time traffic data, and I'm dating myself now, but in about two years ago when the pandemic first happened and the world shut down, on the news we all saw empty roadways. So the billboards that brands and businesses had invested in outside key business districts off a major highway exit felt like they weren't getting any impressions. They may have looked empty. But what we were able to do is work closely with those brands and businesses and our partners in a strategic way to look at where people were moving around. It turned out that while people were staying home, they still had to go to the grocery store. Their lives were becoming increasingly local. And as our lives became increasingly local, the same people you were hitting outside a business district, you were now hitting at the new prime inventory that was outside your local Costco. So there's a lot we can do around connecting with audiences in ways that matter to them, knowing where they are, and helping you adjust your media strategy so that you're reaching them when it matters with messaging that matters at that time. The other thing that has really evolved is people are deeply, deeply connected to their mobile devices. And what's happening now is people want to engage with out of home. It is one of the few, if not only, media formats that allows you to that is real life, it's a huge canvas and people wanna take pictures. We're seeing people share it on social media. We're seeing massive amplification around how people are communicating with their peers and using out of home to do it. And we're also noticing that people are more likely to interact with digital media once they've been exposed to that out of home. Brian? Thank you. Uh, appreciate it. So I would say this as, as we talk about uh, the campaigns and what's happening more than the, the previous cycles is there's more money. And as there's more money in campaigns, the money's looking to actually use, figure out how to communicate their message. 
and they're, they're spending more on TV, they're spending more on radio, uh, and now they're spending more on out of home. I think they see the platform as something that allows them the flexibility as more and more of those digital locations pop up, the flexibility to change their message as what they've said before, rather than just a stagnant uh, yard sign. But also, you know, important thing to consider is, is you know, it's is just as likely as phones are starting to increase, you know, cars aren't going away. And as, as you talked about, you know, they became local during the pandemic, but as they return, you know, cars continue to be a, a factor in, in, in the way we communicate uh, to, to the audiences. And out of home continues to be one of those good targets for us, you know, specifically as, as you get, as, as you start to compete more in these rural areas, uh, it becomes a great target for us and it allows us to track. I think the more digitization of out of home and the more, uh, more type of, uh, you know, um, social media engagement that you see, I think you're going to see more increases of that. You know, basically the net effect of more money in the political system is going to be more money in uh, more of the, you know, the, 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 the not norm media functions, which is outside of TV and radio. And that's what gives out a home the opportunity to grow, especially the flexibility that, uh, that allows us to change their message, you know, in, in, uh, from week to week, even day to day, because we all know that that uh, things happen on campaigns pretty fast and you're, you're looking to maximize your dollars and uh, this becomes a more and more affordable function. There's more of the spending. So, so you see the president, so you see, you know, you, you see a total of the, the presidential, the party spending more, you see ballot initiatives spending more, ballot initiatives are a good driver for us. Uh, that is a that is that is a, a good you know uh, billboard message. It stays longer. It doesn't have to sort of compete and move from a week to week drive. But uh, you, you see the biggest increase here. One of the largest increases is the state and local campaigns, which is what what out of home is has become the most effective for. And when candidates are looking for you know that specific uh, way to communicate, you know at the local level, out of home sort of hits that target more than anything else. Certainly more than television, which is cost prohibitive for political campaigns. Radio it really becomes a little bit harder. But uh, the the, the out of home components are what, uh, what the local races and the state races look like. National parties are starting to look at out of home as well more, uh, more so on the Democratic side because it's more centralized there. You'll see it on the Republican side, but that tends to be more organic. But a lot of these third party groups are definitely using out of home where they haven't used them before. And that's where you're gonna see, you know, sort of more of that growth in money that takes place uh, is, is you, we're seeing it take place, more of that growth is taking place in those independent expenditures or those dark money campaigns that, uh, that just have a tremendous amount of money to spend. And they're looking for metrics and our metrics and the out of home metrics is, uh, has become the most appealing. Next slide. So we started to alluded to, there's so much more spend in the political and the media space. And more importantly, how people are engaging with media is such a differentiator for how they're behaving with, they're then looking and behaving with political ads and government messaging and things that really start to matter with them in their daily lives. So out of home is this primer for digital media. And what we're starting to see is people are four times more likely to see or to do set to have social activations per ad dollar spent. So brands are seeing a much bigger return on that ad spend because people are sharing the media and they're engaging with it in a very unique way. The other thing that is a huge differentiator, and we'll talk about this as we go through it, because our, what we can do reaching audiences on mobile is very unique to the political world and some special filters Lonnie will talk about, is people are more likely, 48% more likely to click on a mobile ad after they've been exposed to out of home. That exposure to out of home and knowing that they be, are already utilizing mobile sites and their digital formats for political news is a huge opportunity for brands to make those media dollars and the dollars they're spending work that much harder for them. And finally, one in four Americans have shared an out of home ad to Instagram. I would challenge you to start scrolling through your Instagram in the next few days. I know when I started to hear this stat, all of a sudden I realized how many brands and businesses were actually using, not, people were sharing out of home organically. So there was a huge share in that way, but also brands and businesses are actually taking their out of home inventory. So they're using it as a media buy, but then they're also using it as a creative component in their campaigns. So there's a lot out of home can do for you to give you that real tangible effect 
allow for in the political and the government space a little bit more of peer-to-peer -peer communication. While it may not be over text, people rely on social media as news, as places they get their news, as places to get information, and they trust what people are share their peers are sharing. And that's where out of home has a little bit of extra reach into the an influence into the digital world. When we look at voter behaviors, especially on political sites via mobile, so reconnecting and drawing that connection to how people are using out of home and reacting to their exposures to out of home to secondary behaviors. The general population visits political sites on their mobile devices 49% or 49% of the general population visits political sites on their mobile devices. But then when we look at more diverse groups and often African American and Hispanic groups were very often disenfranchised, less likely to engage with um, political messaging with government initiatives, they're visiting those sites even on, in even higher percentages on their mobile devices. So it presents a big opportunity for these, type, these types of businesses, um, candidates, ballot initiatives, political action communities, even like local mayoral people, um, mayors or government groups who wanna get messaging, important messaging to their constituents, not even during non-election times to understand where they are and how to reach them. So if, if you already know they're on their mobile devices, layering on that out of home component allows you a higher percentage chance of them to click through and learn more. And we can help you provide that mobile component so you're really strategically targeting those audiences. And then the final stat to hit on this slide is that 67% of those voters visited digital media sites as their primary political sources. Um, we all, I think, saw that during the last election across social media, paid media, different media formats. But again, it goes to the goes back to people are using their devices and their mobile sites and their mobile interactions as their primary source of news and communication. And if you add on out of home, it will work harder. And there's a chance that that media and that um, image sharing will go that much further for your business. All that to say, right, we get you, the persuadable public, and we understand that proper targeting is key when inspiring action. And so our mobile solution helps campaigns reach the most specific demographic. We have the ability to target based on proximity and audiences. Uh, we can serve ads based on proximity to our out of home inventory, certain points of interest and high index audiences. And we can also utilize behaviors, brands and brand categories to reach specific audiences. Next slide. We also have the ability to serve ads to specific residential districts. As most of you know, redistricting is currently underway across the country. Uh, we've mapped all congressional races to provide our clients with the precision they require to win. Uh, for further precision, we apply what we call a sleep filter and uh, target devices that reside in an area during normal sleeping hours, ensuring that residents actually live there. Uh, in the case of the census, mobile was a huge asset to campaigns uh, whose success counted on reaching as many residents in an area as possible. And over the last election cycle, we took it a step further and we embedded state, house, and Senate district maps to offer our clients in each state the ability to target residents in those very specific areas. Um, while we've always been able to reach specific demographics with incredible accuracy, targeting specific residents gives us, um, uh, us, our clients, and the campaigns an edge to actually impact action. And using similar targeting tactics, the mobile solution also uh, allows us to display ads based on the user's language setting on their mobile device. So very much what Lindsay was referring to earlier, those populations um, in, in different areas, particularly in large uh, urban areas with multiple cultures, multiple language dialects and, and things of that nature. So a few examples of political groups and government groups that have leaned into out of home and seen big success. We have partnered with the DC Board of Elections um, a few times now. In one of their more recent campaigns, they used out of home and mobile advertising. They added it to the media mix, kind of one of the first times they had done it. Um, 
to promote voter registration. And they were targeting specifically commuters. So the beauty of a board of elections type of messaging is it can run in transit environments. They were able to be in the W the WMATA system, they were allowed to be on buses, and they also reach people on mobile. They saw an 163% lift from the benchmark secondary action rate and 7.9% of consumers completed a second action. For me, I think the secondary action rate is so important when you're looking at mobile engagement. I, I know I am guilty very often of accidentally clicking through to things. So a click-through rate is, is whatever the rate is, but a secondary action rate means that someone clicked through and then they clicked again or they requested information to learn, in this case, learn about voter registration. So this means that there was a pretty big engagement and much higher than the standard mobile benchmarks uh, for people wanting to learn more about how to register for, to vote and what the messaging was for. So seeing that we exceeded the benchmarks and that many more people were able to register to vote shows the effectiveness of campaigns like this targeting very specific audiences. Then in New Jersey, we worked with Josh Gottheimer. He is a Democratic um, U.S. House representative in the 5th Congressional District, and he was up for re-election in 2020. He was really focused on connecting with his constituents at the hyper-local level, and he chose inventory, as you can see, outside a very uh, small town center, a little strip mall, and right there at a critical juncture between a train, a train line and a roadway. So knowing people were going to be stopped, they would get big exposure to his name, what his platform was. And um, he ended, he won re-election and he had a 7.5% lead against um, his nearest challenger. So important to note here, he had a very significant lead. And we think a lot of that was attributed to him adding out of home and connecting with his constituents in a local way. Then we are nonpartisan here at Outfront. So we also have our Republican example for you. And we helped um, Tyler Paul Smith in Georgia, he won a runoff election. So during his first, the primary race, um, first state house representative, he received 34.91% of the vote in June 2020, and he had five weeks to close the gap between the leader who he was up against to win the runoff election. He ended up winning and he received 51.32% of the vote. But the big ex piece for us is between his original campaign and the runoff, that was when he first added out of home and mobile back into, into his media mix. So he attributes a lot of his success to in expanding his media mix and reaching voters in a real-time way in their community where it mattered, and then making sure that they had opportunities to learn more and learn more about him on mobile. And then finally, as Lonnie mentioned, and I mentioned earlier, we did a lot of work with the census in the last year and in Prince George County, they had the highest self-response rate they've had in their own history with 70%. Um, what they needed to do was reach hard to count populations. And what we learned during the census process from a lot of different communities, this is just one of many examples where they had their highest self-response uh, races or cases um, is, the census day, if everyone remembers, was April 1st, 2020. So a lot of campaigns had started to kind of end their end their campaign as the pandemic was starting. But a lot, but as the pandemic started, a lot of the hard to reach populations are essential workers, the people who rely on public transportation for their for response um, for their commuting needs. And what we saw in Prince George County in a lot of places is that by connecting with them on their mobile devices and in transit and environments where we knew they would be even during a time where it felt like they may or may not be as ready for exposure, there was an opportunity for them when the census deadlines got extended to see higher self-response for that reason. Now I'll pass it to Drew. Hello, uh, my name is Drew Bolin and I've been with Outfront since 2014, serving as art director and then creative director to the South region. And I'd like to talk about what Outfront Studios is, community collaboration, political messaging, and why we keep waking up to do this every day. So, oh, I uh, do not have control, Lindsay. Do you have it now? I'm sorry, I don't. If you- I will click. 
you know, thank you. All right. All right, back on track. So Studios is the creative department of Outfront and Outfront, what we're doing is we're changing the industry by elevating our visual landscape and also the success of our partners. And we're able to do this by partnering with our customers with creative consultation and creating a full campaign path uh, with a heavy out of home foundation. And we're able to get recognition with over 150 awards and be published by some of the largest names in media, really proving our place at the, at the top. And up in the corner, the little map emphasizes a span of about 50 creatives nationwide, meaning we're able to speak the language of a local market or scale across the country with these. If you wanna to go to the next slide, thank you. So why out of home, why this industry? Um, for me, it's making a difference. It's helping someone's dream of making their first pet grooming business successful. It's spreading a message people can get behind. It's providing information to those who may be seeking help with their mental health. So when I hear it's just billboards, I say, no, we're not just selling cigarettes anymore. This is a community service that we all have an obligation to keep at its highest level. And I'm proud to be without front who's not just doing the right thing for creative, but for our communities. Uh, next slide, please. So when you can help educate those communities about a global crisis or change a child's life, it's really something special. And having a unique opportunity to collaborate with these communities, it's our responsibility to use the power of out of home for the benefit of our cities. For example, wewillfindyou.org, that represents the success of a close partnership with local government to ensure human trafficking is ended in the city of Atlanta. So tailoring our services to meet a high demand need of our communities and things like local government, there's a lot to that and we wanna ensure that our process is as seamless as possible. Next, please. Out of Home is an amplified soundboard for our communities, and it's how we can start a conversation and allow our neighborhoods to finish it. And today, we can all be heard very easily in social media. So emphasizing that digital rapport at a more tangible street level where we're all thriving is where Out of Home can really shine. Our next slide, please. A great example is from Reddit. Reddit is a network of online communities where people can dive into their interests and hobbies and passion. And they generate over 165 million votes daily to determine content most seen by their visitors. So for their very first brand campaign, they chose Out of Home to amplify that story to a community these people actually live in. And uh, Reddit's chief marketing officer said for a brand that's 100% digital, outdoor gave us the ability to bring a brand to life in a way that was more real. So bringing large scale legitimacy to a brand that isn't allowed the same opportunity, typically living on small phone screens. Next please. Yeah, next slide please. Thank you. So, this isn't just goofy pictures of steak. It's actually, one more back. It's actually driving action. Could you go one more back, please, Lindsay? Thank you, thank you. So it, like I said, this is driving action. It's not just memes we're looking at. So with the success of this initiative, Reddit saw thousands of visitors to a voter registration page. And I personally visit Reddit about every day to basically join a larger conversation surrounding me. And sometimes that is memes and penguins. And sometimes it's what's happening with local politics. So here, a conversation was started by reaching beyond simple brand awareness and focusing on something that affects us all. And when a brand can reach beyond just me, 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 and direct its attention to a bigger picture like changing the world, consumers may be more likely to engage with that direction. All right, now we can go to Hyundai. And so let's talk about Hyundai. Hyundai took over the entire DC market in preparation for the Hyundai chairman's visit from Hong Kong. 
And there were a few goals here, one being generally attention towards the Hyundai corporate sustainable uh, social responsibility. But more inter interestingly, this was a primer for a meeting with the chairman, our political leaders, and the president regarding a perception change of how vehicles might impact the environment in the future. And deep down, I think people really want to do the right thing. They want to make the right decision. And Hyundai is recognizing this and asking them to help collaborate as a team effort together. So by scanning the QR code here, they can engage the public as an active part of that conversation. So here at Hyundai putting audience first using out of home very deliberately to target a specific event with specific inventory in a specific window of time to better engage with a specific political community. It really shows that you know, advertising is this giant target and what out of home can do is kind of needle point that to exactly what position you want to be on that target. Uh, next, please. Especially with social media being so common, real people have a huge influence on each other and here Twitter using out of homes community based medium to amplify that. So not being able to scroll past an 80 foot tweet on top of a building has this special ability to draw a response and get some better social engagement to a really a bigger conversation. Next, please. Uh, Mayor Francis Suarez of Miami is speaking directly to the tech community who were maybe thinking about making a move out of the Bay Area, which just happens to be Twitter's home base. Out of Home has this old school perception surrounding politics that it's simply a yard sign with a big name on it, but it's so much more than just name recognition. Out of Home can be a direct line to the voters or something that has an actual power to make a change when seen on such a large scale. So Mayor Suarez isn't using billboards to ask for re-election or pushing a political agenda. He's making a direct connection to future residents. Next, please. Digital capabilities have the benefit of being flexible and time sensitive and super engaging. So if you need a live countdown until the day when voting begins, we can do it. If you have a list of goals you're advocating for, we can show that. And if there's a runoff and you need to post a new message immediately, we can do it. And using our mobile platform, we can direct people to a poll location, contact info, a website with donation information, or even a YouTube campaign with a promotion video. Now, Mike didn't do so hot in the election, but being able to get a message out there quickly and abundantly is where our digital assets can, can really shine here. Next, please. So when you're thinking about creating a marketing plan, think about what gets you excited. What, what gets you excited? Start there. Is the direction unique? Are you helping others? How are you saying that? How are you engaging with the community? And as a part of that community, what makes you say, wow? One more, please. This is a picture of an ax in the wall in our Atlanta office. That's a real ax. And this, this ax in the wall represents destroying the old fashioned creative perception in the out of home industry and moving into a new era. So before a client leaves, we ask them to grab this ax handle and take a pledge to axe mediocrity. And with this, they become part of the family. So if you go on to the next slide, I know we're virtual here and this might be kind of weird, but if you would like to join us creatively, I wanna take a virtual pledge together. I, your camera's not on, so don't worry about feeling dorky about this. So if you could just raise your right hand and repeat after me, I will not be mediocre. I'm serious, I will not be mediocre. I'm gonna hold you to it if you said it. I'm gonna hold you to it. So contact your local office and let's get to elevating these communities together. Thanks everybody. All right, thank you all. Um, we will take questions now. 
We have a lot of people saying that they will not be mediocre. So Drew, I think you got good. Thank you. You engagements um, there. If anyone has any questions, let us know. We can hang on. But at the moment we've got probably ten people not being mediocre. Hopefully more. I like amazing. Amazing sounds good. Yeah. All right. Well, you know where to find us. You know how to reach out if you have. Oh, you know, we have a question as I was starting to say, live. what is our favorite political campaign and why? Lonnie, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offer this one to you and then I'd love to hear Brian's answer as well. Oh, okay, we're gonna put me on the spot. So um, I think I think one of my favorite campaigns um, was the Paul Tyler Smith campaign, just to see the level. This is a, a person who was running for office for the first time, um, very involved in politics, but really knew nothing about the actual run. Um, and his ability to kind of grasp the concept of political strategy and understand how this could fit, how out of home could fit in a traditional environment um, was just amazing, right? He was so receptive um, and our Atlanta team did such an amazing job of working with him to really find the right message, the right creative. Uh, he was agile. He, he changed his communications quite a bit, um, really relied on the uh, on the mobile offering um, and and just the, you know, I'll never forget the day after the campaign when he called our, our team in Atlanta and was like, I won because of out of home, right? That was such a powerful statement from a candidate, right? Um, and so that that's probably my favorite race, just like the feedback we got was so amazing and um, really energizing, I thought. Brian, do you have a, from your perspective, are there any campaigns you've seen that you think have stands yeah. out? Yeah, I I, listen, I think you gotta go back to the basic one that we, most of us learned in college, which was the Daisy ad, which was the L, Lyndon B. Johnson campaign in 64 as a television ad. And it just shows you the powerful of the medium that exists, you know, just one ad that, you know, didn't even play, I think didn't play that many times. And it just sort of reinforced the fear, the anxieties that the general public had with, with, with um, uh, who was it, uh, Goldwater. Uh, and I, I, I think that's what drew my interest in politics, is, is seeing that ad for the first time, just sort of feeling that emotional draw, and, you know, it was, it was 30 years later for me. But uh, I think as, as you look at that ad, and even, you know, a, a stronger one being a Californian, was also, and I think, you know, one of the colleagues on this, on this Zoom would know is, was the the they're coming ad by Pete Wilson, you know, during the during the I think I believe the ninety four election his reelection, I mean, those are the ads that sort of I remember that had this visceral reaction that you you really look at the medium and say oh my god this this the impact it could have is, is just it's just astounding. Great. Um, another question question we have and I can answer this one is what are the rules for using artwork or photos for digital media? Can I use anything and do I need to license artwork? Um, so as far as political advertising goes, and this I think goes across the board for out of home as well, um, when it's political, we require a paid for byline. We have some, we can definitely give you more detail on the specifications around that, but whenever you're using photos, we do need some kind of proof that you have the rights to use it. Um, it can, you know, depending on what it is, it can be an email um, in the political world, especially when we look at like logo usage, and people's faces and things like that. We, we do often need to just make sure you have permission. Um, and I hope that answers your question. And then we have our, obviously our internal political copy approvals yes. is just like ensuring that every, uh, every political ad, whether it takes a side or just simply says vote, right? Is, is run by political ad copy or political copy, <laughs> very important. And we have two questions. One is, do you assist nonprofits? And the other one is, do you think that this messaging works for nonprofit agencies? Um, I can give a little answer, but I think, Drew, you've done work with a lot of nonprofits, so you'll be able to answer as well. Um, if you're a nonprofit, 
There are things we do around PSAs. So there might be opportunities for assistance. Um, every market, I don't, I don't know our specific policies. We'd, you'd have to reach out to your local market to understand what we can do and helping with rates and things like that. Um, but the messaging definitely works for nonprofit agencies. In fact, Drew probably has some amazing stories of different nonprofits that have worked for us and have seen just massive engagement, probably donations and more. So I'll pass it to Drew. Yeah, absolutely. We we love working with nonprofits, uh, especially in the creative department. Like Lindsay said, depending on local market, you know, availability and things like that. There's a number of different ways that we can help nonprofits, and it's absolutely something that we can help with creatively. Um, like I said back in a handful of those slides in the past, was you know some of the greatest things that I like doing here is helping the community and being a beacon of a positive message. That's just such a great thing. So when we're able to do that and able to partner with uh, folks like yourself, it's just kind of overwhelmingly positive for not just us and having fun creating artwork, but just for the city uh, and, and seeing something at such a large scale with maybe there's not that kind of opportunity in other ways. So absolutely. Um, that is something we can help with. Okay, we have one other person who added to the chat that the creative process is something they struggle with. We, um, Lisa, we, we look forward to chatting with you. I, I do wanna just note that too, I think for a lot of groups, whether it's political groups, nonprofits, the creative process can be hard. Out of home has huge benefit in that it's so big. You've got these massive canvases that you have a chance to say so much on, but there are also people who are passing by them quickly. So you don't want to say too much. And um, our whole studios team, Drew, everyone on the team can be very, very helpful in really helping you take that messaging and what you're trying to say and get it in a way that people want to stop and see it and remember it. And I think, Lindsay, when you and Brian and myself talk to campaign consultants and public affairs folks, right, we're often telling them we understand sometimes uh, the TV commercial drives all of your communications. And in our case, it shouldn't, right? And so we, we we're constantly educating uh, those communications directors and public affairs directors on how the creative um, and the message for out of home should be separate and can often dictate a better message for TV, radio, and other media. So we are we are talking to to folks about that, you know, on a daily basis. All right, I think we're at. Oh, we have two more questions. I think we're at time. This is recorded, um, but we can definitely. Um, I can stay on for a few more minutes if anyone needs. Um, and we are noting any questions. So if we don't get to you or we respond to you directly, the person who asked about Sacramento, will have someone reach out to you, um, directly. And then another question is, do you offer a dashboard for client campaign management track and to adjust campaigns for my team to self-manage our assets and content, as well as defining our demographics? We don't have a dashboard yet that you're able to go in and manually do everything and sort of bypass our systems. Um, but we are working on different ways to make the process that much more seamless. We've got some stuff in the works. Um, and part of the reason we can't automate and give a kind of client direct access is because we do still, especially for political related things, we do still, do still have to make sure that the creative goes through the proper checks. Um, before it goes live out of home being such a mass reach medium, we need to make sure it's still, it is still considered appropriate and um, allowable um, before it goes live. But we can definitely follow up with the person who asked that question as well to help you learn more and talk a little bit more about what you're asking for. All right, um, so we're definitely a few minutes over, but thank you to everyone for joining. Um, and feel free to reach out if you have more questions. Thanks.